Hi, honey. What you doing? It is way too loud out here, and I do have the opportunity to film inside of a house, so let's go. about Dryson Savvy. Anything in particular? You smell like you've been eating cat food, you naughty little dog. All right, we're talking dry suits. Now that I've had a few months of experience diving with my dry suit, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into details thanks to Diving Unlimited International, or DUI for short. In this video, I'll be covering sizes, style, materials, accessories, and other customization options. Vamanos. My name is Sarah, and after teaching scuba diving in the tropics for several years, I've found myself primarily diving in dry suit country. My dry suit has had a huge positive impact on my experience diving around the Pacific Northwest on my dive dry road trip. Join me for scuba lessons, diving adventures, and van life nonsense. If you haven't seen my Dive Dry Road Trip series, I have linked the playlist in the description below and you can see my journey of becoming a dry suit diver. In those videos, I also highlight a bunch of dive sites that you should definitely add to your bucket list. All right, now getting to my dry suit. I have a DUI FLX Extreme. This is a tri-laminate dry suit and I have waited to make this video, partly because of timing and logistics with getting my suit in the first place, but also because I wanted to have more experience diving with it so that I have a better knowledge base for sharing this information. I'll share more details about my story with getting this dry suit at the end of the video. Spoiler alert, van life made the situation more difficult than it needed to be, and the suit I have now wasn't originally going to be my final suit. So stick around for that. If this is your first time hearing about dry suits for scuba diving, you may wanna watch my dry suit for beginners video before coming back to this one. That video is a great resource for anyone just starting out with dry suit diving or looking for a suit on a budget. All right, let's get into it. I suffered for over a year wearing an ill-fitting 7mm semi-dry wetsuit when I first moved back to California after living in Indonesia for two years. I didn't have the money to spend on gear, which is why I've shared so many resources about finding gear on a budget. After a particularly frozen dive at Point Lobos near Monterey, my dive buddy told me to reach out to Diving Unlimited International as a diving professional. Jack from DUI was incredibly helpful, and I ended up driving to San Diego to get a full tour. Hey, welcome to DUI. My name's Jack. I do the marketing, and we're gonna go and explore DUI today. This is awesome. Yeah. The DUI team is super friendly, and Jack in particular took a lot of time to answer all my questions about dry suits. Let's see the options you have for your dry suit purchase. Rip it out. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> There are two types of suits when it comes to sizing, stock and custom. Because dry suits are not form-fitting, stock sizing can work for a lot of people, but if you want to get the most comfortable fit, custom sizing is an awesome option. When you go to a dealer, someone will take your measurements and the suit will be made to order. Some of the more important measurements are the length of the suit and the inseam. If you have a suit that is too long, specifically legs that are too long, and you have air trapped in the feet of your suit, you run the risk of your feet popping out of the foot space and losing control of your fins. This makes it really difficult to do the bailout skill that I showed in episode one of my dive dry road trip. In general, you want to get a size that allows you to move freely with your thickest undergarments on while not being so big that air gets trapped all the time. I personally wouldn't ever get a back entry suit, but that's because you always need someone to help zip you up. And because I solo dive a lot of the time, that's not really an option. If you're always diving with a buddy, then you don't need to worry about that. However, a common configuration, and my personal favorite, is front entry suit with a diagonal zipper. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's really easy to self-don, especially if you have limited mobility in your shoulders, but it is all there and accessible to you. The zipper is the most important part of the dry suit and generally becomes the weak point over time. 
DUI uses YKK metal zippers, which need to be rinsed well after each dive and generously waxed for longevity. I do know divers that have dry suits with plastic zippers and they seem to work well for them. I just don't know what kind of lifespan those plastic zippers have. Trilaminate suits are super popular and for good reason. The suits are made of a three layer combo, typically a butyl rubber core with polyester or nylon on the outsides. These suits are usually more breathable than neoprene, making them desirable in places where it is hot at the surface, but cold in the water. They don't have built-in thermal protection, so your warmth entirely depends on the undergarments you're wearing. Neoprene is the other material option and can be good for people who don't like to travel with their suit. Neoprene, even crushed neoprene suits, are bulkier, heavier, take longer to dry, and require more weight to descend. They do have their own thermal protection, so you can wear thinner undergarments and are relatively cheap, so many people end up in neoprene suits as their first step into dry suit diving. Before we continue with important things like seals, I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters. My goal of teaching scuba diving on YouTube and in person is slowly feeling like it could be a reality because of these people. I truly and honestly cannot express my gratitude enough. There, there are no words for it. <laughs> if you'd like to join the Asul Scuba community, you can check out the different tiers available at patreon.com slash Unlimited. There you'll have access to extra videos from me, different posts, behind the scenes, nonsense, and things that I just don't feel comfortable sharing on YouTube. <laughs> and it's also the place that I'm building relationships with people that I actually meet in person and go diving with while I'm on the road. So if any of that sounds interesting and you wanna support what I do here, check out the link in the description below. Neoprene is less common these days because of the level of seepage you can experience during a dive. Latex is durable, but less comfortable and also less heat resistant, which realistically isn't an issue for most divers. I personally went with the silicone zip seals primarily because of their heat resistance. The van gets so hot sometimes and I wanted to have something that can withstand those kinds of conditions. Also, the fact that I can change out my seals at a dive site instead of having to send it into the manufacturer if they get ripped is a huge plus. Silicone is more prone to ripping, so you have to be extra careful with sand, your nails, and storage. Built-in boots are convenient, but they become a weak point in the suit. These boots are generally close in size to your wetsuit boots, so you can interchange your wetsuit and dry suit fins. My suit has built-in boots, and it's something that I would have chosen differently had I gotten a custom suit. The sock and rock boot combo is popular for those of us who do a lot of shore diving over sharp rocks or long surface walks. They do tend to force you to buy a fin with a larger foot pocket, but that may not be an issue because a lot of divers prefer to have a heavier, shorter fin when dry suit diving. Absolutely no question here, you need pockets. For my fellow petite divers, there are small pockets available. So if you're going custom, make sure to opt for small pockets because the standard size is ridiculously big. Look at this pocket. It's huge. Diving with wet gloves is doable in a lot of cooler water conditions and can give you more dexterity. However, dry gloves will be the more comfortable option. I have personally gone diving down to six degrees Celsius, which is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit with wet gloves, and I do not recommend it. <laughs> If you're regularly doing dives under 10 degrees Celsius, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, go for dry gloves. If you know you'll need to pee during a dive, you'll have to decide on whether or not to install a pee valve. These can be finicky and can result in a super not fun accident during your dive. For that reason, I've heard of many people choosing to wear adult diapers instead. I haven't had to deal with this issue yet, but if I do decide to get back into cave diving at some point, I will need to figure it out. If you have a preference, I would love to hear your opinions and solutions in the comments below. Other ways to personalize your suit include the color of the outer material and things like patches. 
These are fun and helpful because all of us look the same underwater. So if you choose a unique color, fabric design, or custom patch, it's easier to distinguish who you are. There's cheetah. Wow, that is a look. <laughs> All right, now for my story. <laughs> my original plan was to get the TLS 350 dry suit from DUI, kitted out with all the blues for a Sewell Unlimited. I was gonna get two small pockets and the sock rock boot combo. Through no fault of anyone involved, supply chain issues delayed everything, so my suit wasn't gonna be made in time to start my dive dry road trip. And that's why I just love DUI so much because they found a solution really quick. They sent me this suit as a loner with the intention that I would get my custom suit and then send this one back. As time went on, I found that this suit was really working for me and I felt good about keeping it because it felt like it was also kind of a more sustainable choice since this was just sort of waiting in a warehouse for someone to claim it. So instead of having something brand new made for me, I'm using kind of a secondhand thrift option, which is kind of cool. And although some of the features aren't what I would have chosen, it doesn't impact the quality of the suit. This is an excellent suit and it's allowing me to explore things that I would not even consider diving if I was still in my wetsuit. It absolutely would have been possible for me to wait and have my custom suit made but it just made the most sense to go with this option. In the future, when I do have to replace this suit, I will be going custom just because of the benefits with being a petite person. Getting a custom suit is quite nice. With that whole journey, I can officially say that my DUI dry suit is my favorite piece of scuba equipment. It has completely changed my attitude about cold dive days and I just love the comfort of diving dry. I definitely will not go back to diving in wetsuits unless the water is properly warm. <laughs> so I wanna know, are you a dry suit diver? What kind of customization options did you choose? And do you have a fun story about diving in a dry suit? I share some of my silliness in my Dive Dry Road Trip series, so if you're looking for something to binge, there's plenty of content there waiting for you. Particularly my struggles of getting into my dry suit for my first ocean dives are quite silly. You can find that in episode two, which I'll link below. You know the drill, like, subscribe if you aren't already, and check out Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here. Okay, love you, bye! Yes, I need to wax. Let's wax this bad boy. Abby, go away. Go away, baby. I love you. Go away. Go away. Get all night. <laughs> Everything Jack may or may not say may not may or may not be actually true. <laughs>
But in Jack's eyes, it's it's real. Yeah. <laughs>